Hi everyone, it's Brianna and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brianna Scott and I wanted to give you guys five tips on being a great litigator. So I wanted to do this video because as you guys know, I've started a business where I help people um, kind of elevate the skills that they already have to be better oral advocates, public speakers, persuasive speakers, and things like that. So I'm really just gonna jump right into this. Um, the first tip that I have is to know your audience. So whether it's a judge, a jury, a group of kindergartners, or um, a group of elderly people at a rally for a political party, obviously you would tailor each of those for um, what your audience is. For example, if you are talking in front of a judge, you want to spend less time kind of explaining and teaching him what the law is because he went to law school, he's read the case, understood, um, kind of brushed up on the case law and things that are appropriate in that way. And um, you don't really need to spend as much time explaining how the facts meet those elements as you would for a jury who may or may not have that much of a legal background, um, but may come in with predispositions because they watch law and order and think that court is supposed to go a different way. So um, you want to be more efficient and concise with the judge. You want to take more time kind of explaining things, but not so much time that you're boring a jury. So that's just a quick example of how you would tailor your argument if, you're, if your audience is a judge versus a jury. And the same applies to all other disciplines of public speaking as well. So the next topic, um, or the next tip that I have is to look for case law, and if it's not law, then look at research. Obviously, um, you may try cases for years, months, may feel completely comfortable, but it always helps to go back, read the statute at least once a week or right before you try a case, just to kind of brush up on any issues or any skills that um, you have, just to make sure that you're not missing out on anything, whether it's new law or a change in the statute that you may have overlooked or forgotten about. The next tip is to make sure that you um, are prepared when writing a speech, giving an opening statement, closing statement, things like that. So um, if you're giving a speech and there isn't much kind of back and forth, um, just like there is with an opening statement, um, I think that's different preparation than if you plan to answer questions at the end or if you plan on doing a direct examination or a cross-examination. Um, and I'm going to explain why um, in just a second. So if you are giving an opening statement or a um, kind of speech where you're not taking questions at the end, you um, can write down your speech. Um, and if you've done this for a while, you can use bullet points. And when you write down your speech, you memorize it. But then you're going to forget that speech because you don't want to be married to the language and the verbiage that you used when writing the speech. You want to just be able to kind of go over the ideas that you wanted to touch on um, and be able to flow from point to point without focusing on what word did I use? What was the transition language? I really liked that. Let me stop and think about it because you don't want to have these unnecessary pauses because you are looking for a specific word when you can use another word. Now, if you are going to be doing a cross-examination or doing Q&As at the end um, or direct examination and someone says, you know, I don't remember, can you refresh my recollection? You want to be able to refresh their recollection by um, going to a specific piece of evidence or a specific you know, point or thing, study, whatever it is that you have of theirs to refresh their recollection, whether it's their notes, whether it's their medical records, um, and it's very effective and the trier of fact, whether it's a judge or a jury or the person who's listening to your story, when they ask you a question at the end of your speech, you can say, I got it from this study. It's very helpful, more in depth than what I'm saying, um, but please feel free to contact me if you have any questions about it. Um, and on a cross-examination, for example, you may have a witness, which happened in a jury that I've 
that I did recently um, where the witness said that the injury was a left leg versus a right leg. And so when when they say previously that it was a left leg and now they're saying a right leg, that's something that the court can consider. They're saying that they're really injured but can't remember what leg it is. Um, now what weight a court gives or doesn't give um, isn't really within my realm of expertise or something that I can control, but I can make sure that I am quick. Oh, well, you remember that you gave a, a deposition before and that deposition was on, you know, March 15th and that is closer in time to the accident or to the event than today. And in that transcript that I have in front of me um, during that deposition, you said, X. You said left leg, but today you're saying right leg. Okay, which leg is it? Um, and questions like that, being able to point like on page 24, line 6, you said this. Um, do you remember that? No, you don't remember that? Well, you do recall taking a deposition. You do recall that that was six months ago, and that is closer in time to the event that happened. So those are kind of ways that you can quickly jump in, jump out, and if they don't remember, you already know what page it is to read it into the record. Um, and if they you know, do remember, then you've proven your point that you know they have inconsistent statements. So those are different ways to prepare, but the kind of general tip is to know the source of where your information is coming from so you're not fumbling through papers to answer questions or to be effective in cross-examination or to refresh your witness on direct examination. The next tip that I have is um, to make sure that you don't ask too many questions. So you always want to be mindful of the time that you have. You want to be comfortable with the time that you have, but you also don't want to bore your audience. So definitely think about that when you um, are trying cases and you see people's eyes glazing over or it seems like the judge is kind of fidgeting in his chair um, that you may have spent too much time on something. Um, but there are also times when they may be in a rush, but you need to make sure that you have gotten all the points that are pertinent um, so that you're zealously advocating for your client. So there's definitely a balance there. So just to recap, my five tips are to one, know your audience. Two, you need to re look at your research, case law, everything, make sure you're on point so that you are prepared. The third thing is to write down your speech. Um, the fourth thing is that after you write it down, you need to memorize it, whether it's from bullet points or a speech, and then, um, the, then you need to forget it so that you're able to kind of flow comfortably from topic and point to point. And then the last tip, I think that was five tips, I think I went in order, um, is to make sure that you are cognizant of the time and paying attention and being alert when looking at how your audience is perceiving the information. Because if you see a lot of scrunched up faces, you may need to try to explain that out to remove the scrunched up faces. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you want more in-depth one-on-one conversations, feel free to email me at my Southern Elevation LLC at gmail.com, which will be linked down below, and to um, check out my website and try to set up a time to meet with me to do one-on-one -on -one training, consulting, and um, road mapping to make sure that you are being the best advocate or persuasive speaker that you can be. I look forward to talking to you guys in my next video, and I'll see you soon. Bye! Thank you.